rise us up as we pray together, preparing ourselves for the touch of the Lord, that the Lord himself who has decided to take us from the burning bush to the promised land, that the Lord will touch your heart and turn you around, make you face the right direction, following through the place he wants you to be, where he wants you to go. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord, that that promised land, the Lord has decided to take his people to you, that you will not miss that land. Come on the highway to the promised land. Talk to the Lord, Lord, help me. Hold my hand. Show me the way. Lead me on and lead me through. From the burning bush of this world. And trials and troubles, temptations. The touch of the people of the world and lead me on. To that promised land. If you are willing to be led, they will lead you. Be willing to be guided, they will guide you to that land. The land flowing with milk and honey. The land of peace. The land of power. The land of provision. The land of preservation. The land of prosperity, plenty. The land of all sufficiency. The land of the pouring of the goodness of the Lord. Tell the Lord that God will so guide you. God will so lead you. And that you'll not die by the wayside. You'll not be part of the mixed multitude that came out but couldn't get in. You are coming out. You want to get in from the burning bush to the promised land. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And the people of God said, yeah. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, with all the resolution and the possibility of making decisions within us. Lord, we come to you. We do not want to remain in the land of Egypt. We do not want to remain in the bunny bush. We want to come out, go through the past, and get into that promised land you have for every one of your people. Therefore, Lord, we pray, whatever will make us miss the land, take it away from us in Jesus' name. All sin. All transgression, all iniquity, all deception, all hypocrisy, all lies, all works of the devil that will tie us down. Lord, we pray you remove everything and break every yoke and destroy every chain out of our lives in Jesus' name. We came out of the world. And we announced to the world we're just going to heaven. Lord, we pray anything that will make us perish with the people of the world, take it away from our lives. That land, that land, the promised land, the land of Canaan, paradise above heaven, will get there in Jesus' name. Lead us by the way. Guide us by the way. Hold our hand by the way that will not perish on the way in Jesus' name. 
We thank you because we know you have answered. As we show us the way now, Lord, we're going to follow. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Yeah. Another amen before you sit down. Yeah. Now you can sit down. God bless every one of you. As we come to the Bible teaching this morning, we're looking at a very important subject of scripture. And it relates to the people of God. The Lord first effected it in the lives of the children of Israel. And now he's transferring it to you and to me. He wants the same thing. Coming out and going in. Leaving the past and getting to the future. Holding on to the Lord and walking in the right direction. In the direction of the Lord, in the direction of His Word. Until we get to the place He wants us to get to by His grace. In His strength, by His power, and by the provision He has made on Calvary. He wants to take us there, we are going to get there in Jesus' name. I'm sure you've looked at that in your program. The point, the topic is from the burning bush to the promised land. We're looking at Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock by the, to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even for it. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was fire. But the bush and the bush was consumed. It's a picture of the children of Israel. God in trouble, in trouble, in torment, in temptations, and in tribulation. And he saw them in that bony bush. And then it says, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight where the bush is not burnt. Well, the bush is not consumed. You think about the people of Israel from that time until now. They had gone through quite a lot. Egyptian bondage. Assyrian bondage. Babylonian bondage. And the Middle Persian bondage. And all the same. Those people of Israel. They still remain today. Which is exactly what was seen here. That although the bush may burn, but there's no consumption of that bush. That the people of God, after all that difficulty, trial, after all the persecution and the pressure that is still remains. And that's what you find about the people of God today. In fact, the Bible says that we shall inherit the kingdom of God. Through much tribulation. And they were told in verse 4 when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. The Lord called his name. I pray that when the Lord is calling your name, you will hear. All the other preoccupations of the world will not block your ears, you will hear. Self or society will not block your ears, you will hear your name. And the passion and desire of a world that is rushing to destruction will not block your ears. When he says, Moses, Moses, you will respond and say, Lord, here am I. In verse 5, and he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes 
from off thy feet for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground when you come to holy ground in the presence of the lord there are some things to put on that the lord may say take that off an attitude take that off a disposition take that off an action take that off anything that will stand between you and the lord take that off there are some things the lord will never tell you until you take off some of the things you are wearing there are some revelations you'll never have until you take off that thing you have been having in contact with the dirty world the shoe that he had on he had, had that shoe on that gathered dust that gathered dirt that gathered all the defilements on the ground and the lord said take off that defiled thing take off that soiled thing take off that dirty thing and there are some things like that you have to take off away from your mind take away from your heart take away from your life and then the lord will be able to speak to you but six moreover you said i am the god of thy father the god of abraham the god of isaac the God of Jacob and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Those are the people the Lord reveals himself to, the people that count the name of God sacred. They count the person of God sacred. They count the presence of God sacred. They count the proclamation of the Lord, the announcement of the Lord sacred. And because of the sacredness that they attribute to the Lord, there are some ways they behave and act in the presence of the Almighty God. And that's why he begins to reveal himself unto them. And then in verse 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my, of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land, out of the land, unto the good land, and a large, unto a land filled with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The Lord was going to take them away from that burning bush, and the Lord was going to conduct them unto the promised land. That means they were going on a journey. In fact, the Bible uses a very language for them, going on a journey. Let's look at Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 20. And he took their journey. You see that? And he took their journey. It's a journey that they were going through. And then in verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day. And in the pillar of clouds. To lead them by the way, and by night in a pillar of fire, to give them light to go by day and by night. He took not away the pillar of cloud of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night before from before the people going on a journey, going on a journey numbers chapter 10 the journey from the burning bush to the promised land the journey from the great trial the journey from the great temptation the journey from all the oppression the persecution and the pain onto the promised land numbers chapter 10 verse 29 and Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Reguel the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, 
We're journeying on to the place. You see that again? It's a journey. And the Lord is taking also that journey out of this world into the world to come. Out of the world of sinning into the heaven of righteousness and holiness. We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us. I pray you'll come with us. I said, I pray you'll come with us. And we will do thee good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. With you, we're on a journey. Our pilgrims in this world. And we're moving on to the land that the Lord has provided. And the Lord has prepared for the people of God. Pilgrims and strangers we are. In this world of sin, in this world of woe, and he wants us to understand that we shed everything up. We take everything up. We put everything up and then move on onto that land. In First Peter chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. There are some things that will war against your soul. Try to delay you, debar you, try to kind of distract you so that you don't focus on the journey. But it says, remember, we're strangers and pilgrims in this world. And we're going to that land of peace and rest and the land of happiness. Focus on the Lord and keep on looking unto the Lord. In the journey, you know, there are mile posts. When you're taking a journey, mile post number one, number two, number three, until you get to the end of the journey. We look at the children of Israel and we see some mile posts in their journey. Number one, the Passover. The Passover. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That was the beginning of the journey. That's what the Lord is telling you and telling me today, telling everyone. That as you're going to begin the journey, you must depend upon the blood of the Lamb. Apply the blood of the Lamb. Believe in the blood of the Lamb. Because it's when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The Passover. Number two, the passage. The passage. They passed through the Red Sea. It was like their water baptism. After you've given your life to the Lord, and you're born again, and you're washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And then you cross over from death unto life. You cross over from sin unto righteousness. You cross over from darkness unto light. You cross over. From the world unto the Lord. After that Passover, there is the passage through the Red Sea. And you are immersed in water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Number three, it's the provision of manna. If you read your Bible very well, you'll find, as they went on in the journey, after the Passover, then there was the passage through the Red Sea. After that, the provision of manna for them. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed me now and evermore as we go on in the journey as well. We need that manna. We need that bread. As the Lord himself is conducting his people in the land, in the place we have to be. Number four, the power over the Am Amalekites. After they came to that place. Eventually, the Amalekites said, no, you're not going to pass on. You're not going to move on. There are temptations and trials and persecutors and the people of this world that will try to stop you. But nobody will stop you. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who, 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 who can be against us? Against us. They had power over the Amalekites. Just immediately after that, the pouring out of water from the rock. You see, as we move on, the Lord is saying is the water of life. 
the bread of life, and also the water of life, that he pours out the water out of the rock, and it's from that smithy rock. The Lord Jesus Christ, the rock that followed them, that's Christ, and then that water of life that refreshes you, that revitalizes you, that quenches your thirst, that brings you li life into life again, that brings resurrection strength into your life. That water of life pours out from you, from the rock. Not to leave that, after that now you have the proclamation and promulgation of the law. The Lord now said, Moses, you're going to take my law and you're going to give unto them so that they will know how to conduct their lives as we go on in this pilgrimage, going from the burning bush to the promised land. He gives us his word. He gives us his doctrine. He gives us his teaching. He gives us the directives as to what we do, how we live, how we act, how we behave, how we conduct ourselves, how we do all that we need to do, that our lives may be pleasing unto the Lord. After that, you'll find number seven, the principles of relationship. Father to children, stranger to stranger, a master to the servant, you find that the Lord gave the principles of relationship, leading by kindness and leading the people and the servants to showing their love to their master and saying, I will not go out. After that, he then told them about the preparation of the tabernacle. The preparation of the tabernacle. All those six, step after step, he was leading them on. From the burning bush on to the promised land. The Passover, the passage, the provision, the power, the pouring out, the proclamation promulgation, the principles, the preparation of the tabernacle. And as the Lord leads us on, he leads us like pilgrims. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land, going from the burning bush to the promised land. I am weak, but thou art strong. Then it says, hold me by the powerful hand, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Open now the crystal fountain. That's the story I've been telling you, the manna and then the water coming out of the rock. Open now the crystal fountain. Where is the healing stream does flow? Let the fairy cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and my shield. If I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fear subside. Bear me through the swelling torrent. Lead me, land me safe on Canaan's side. I see a lot of people that perish by, their way, by the wayside, that bleached their bones in the wilderness, that backslid before they could get to the land. But Lord, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises I will ever give to thee, Savior. Come, we long to see thee, long to dwell with thee above. That's the Canaan land we're looking for. That's the promised land we're looking for. Long to dwell with Christ above. And to know in full communion all the sweetness of thy love. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, take thy waiting people home. When that time comes, I pray that you'll be there in Jesus' name. Are you still there? I said, I pray you'll be there in Jesus' name. From the burning bush to the promised land. Three points we're going to consider. Number one, dwelling in the burning bush without permanent liberation. Dwelling in the burning bush 
without permanent liberation. Number two, deliverance from the burning bush by the powerful Lord. Deliverance from the burning bush by the powerful Lord. Number three, direction from the burning bush to the promised land. There's a, there's a road we take. There's an highway that we take. And there is an express way that we take. That direction to follow. Direction from the burning bush unto the promised land. Number one. What's number one again? Dwelling in the burning bush without permanent Library. You know, there are people that are all their lifetime. They dwell in the burning bush. They dwell in the temptation, in the trial, in the tribulation, in the sorrow, in the trauma. All the time. Day and night. Morning, noon and night. Beginning of the year till the end of the year. In childhood, when they're young, and then when they're growing older, until old age, they seem not to know the pathway out of the burning bush. Maybe they get a little vibration in a crusade, a little vibration in a retreat, a little vibration in a conference, but they do not have a permanent vibration. What a tragedy. What a serious, serious calamity to dwell and to stay. To remain in that burning bush without permanent liberation. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I read there from verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Reading from verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy. He's talking about the children of Israel. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations. They provoked him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, newly up whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, thou hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, he despised them, he rejected them, he cast them up because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And then he goes on in verse 20 and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are very forward generation children in whom there is no faith. They didn't have the faith to forsake all their evil, all their abomination, all their sin. They are just limping, limping, and they couldn't follow the Lord walking straight and walking upright. And because of, the, of that, the Lord rejected them, despised them, forsook them, and he came back to that same born in bush, born in trial, born in persecution, born in pain, and born in pressure from the heathen nations. It tells us in verse 21, they have moved me to jealousy. Well, that which is not God, they have provoked me to anger with their vanities and I will move them to jealousy of those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation for a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with an increase and search of fire the foundations of the mountains. Do you see what came upon them? The burning bush again came in another form because they didn't have permanent, permanent, permanent liberation. Ezekiel chapter 22. 
Ezekiel chapter 22. I'm reading to you from verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 22. Reading from verse 18. Dwelling in the burning bush. What do you think about that? A person that had been in trial, trouble, pain, trauma, difficulty, danger, and the Lord stretched out his hand. And he said, I'm willing to deliver you. And then the Lord gave some liberation. But he slid back. He went back into that same trial, trouble, trauma, tribulation. Ezekiel chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 18, son of man. The house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and chain and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. In the midst of the furnace. That's furnace of fire. They are even dross and silver. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and in my fury and will leave you there and melt you. The children of Israel, they came out of that first burning bush, for the Lord said, because of their evil, because of their abominations, because of their defilements, because of the iniquity that became permanent in their lives, and because they did not learn how to do good. They did not learn how to live a righteous life. He said, I'm going to gather you together. And I will make you remain in that fire, in that furnace. In verse 21, yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. And ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that the I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you i pray the lord will deliver us from anything and everything that will make us get into that burning bush again in jesus name amos chapter 4 amos chapter 4 children of israel they never launch their lesson they never launch their lesson you would have thought the egyptian bondage egyptian fury Egyptian burning would have cured them of their sin, of their evil. But no, no, no. That's why the Lord kept on saying, I'm bringing them back again into that burning bush. Amos chapter 4 verse 11. I have overthrown some of you. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And ye were as a fire brand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. The reason why they remained permanently and they dwelt in the burning bush without a permanent liberation is because even though the Lord showed them mercy, they rejected the hand of mercy. They rejected the goodness of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 33. The pity is there are some people that will not only be in the burning bush here in the world, they will slide into eternity and then still slide into that eternal burning, everlasting burning. They have been given warning here in the world. They've been given the possibility of liberation here in the world. They've been given the possibility of deliverance, freedom, total liberation here in the world. But because they rejected it, eventually they will slide into everlasting burning. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 14. The sinners in Zion. When you mention Zion, you should mention righteousness. 
When you mention Zion, you should mention glory. When you mention Zion, you should mention happiness and joy. When you mention Zion, you should mention perfection. The city of perfection. But it says, there are sinners there, sinners there, sinners there. When you mention a church like this, you mention holiness, you mention righteousness, and you mention the approaching of the Adamic nature, you mention sanctification, holiness. But there's, there are sinners in Zion. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with the divine fire, who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings. I pray you will not be there. I said, I pray you will not be there. But you know, Jesus said, there are people that will be there because they refuse to repent. They reject salvation. They reject righteousness. They reject holiness. Because of that, they will slide into that everlasting burning in the world. At present in time, burning bush. And then when they get to eternity, they resume an everlasting burning. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 40 and 42. Matthew 13, verses 40 to 42. And they, as therefore the tires were gathered and burnt in the fire, so shall it be. In the age of this world, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels and shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity, and shall, be, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. I pray you'll not be there. I said, I pray you'll not be there. But you can see the people in life, burning bush. At a point of death, burning bush. After death, burning bush. In time, burning bush. And in eternity, burning bush, hellfire, because they remain in their sin. They remain in their evil. But shh, deliverance is available today. I said deliverance is available today. Point number two, deliverance from the burning bush by the powerful Lord. Deliverance, deliverance from the burning bush by the powerful Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 4, I'm reading verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 20. But the Lord, that's the mighty God. That's the powerful Lord. That's the one that Pharaoh tried to resist. But then God subdued him. The Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, out of the burning bush, even out of Egypt, and to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. The Lord has taken you. It's very easy for the Lord because the miracle worker. It's very easy for the Lord because it's the God of total ultimate authority. It's very easy for the Lord because he's a covenant keeper to take anyone to take you out of that fairy furnace, out of that bunny bush, out of that trauma, trial, temptation, and then to lead you on onto the place where he says he's going to lead you. And if you're going to if you're going to allow him today, the Lord is going to hold your hand, he's going to pull you out, he's going to get you out of that fairy furnace, and he's going to get you out of that burning bush, and he'll take you to the promised land in Jesus' name. We're looking in at Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And we're reading there from verse 1, the ability of God, the power of God, the authority of God, the provision of God, the prevailing power of the Almighty God to take you out, out of the burning bush, and then bring you into that land of promise. Isaiah chapter 43, I'm reading from verse 1. But now thou, thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, 
And he that from thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Redemption is necessary. Forgiveness is necessary. Salvation is necessary. Freedom from sin is necessary. If you are going to get out of that burning bush, it says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. You become a possession of the Lord. And because you become a possession of the Lord, he himself then surrounds you with refreshing. He surrounds you with protection. That the burning bush will not have any effect over your life anymore. But still, when thou passes through the waters, I will be with you. And, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through what? Tell me out loud. Through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopian Seba for thee, since thou wast precious in my sight. The obedient are precious in the sight of the Lord. The ransomed people of God, they are precious in the sight of the Lord. Those who turn away from sin and seriously, sincerely, wholeheartedly, they turn to the Lord. They are precious in the sight of the Lord. Those who make a commitment to the Lord, oh Lord, I am out and I will never get him there again. They are precious to the Lord. Those who make a total break, a permanent break, an everlasting break from sin. And he said, Lord, I am for you forever and ever. You can have me. You can own me. You can possess me. You can control me. You can lead me. The very precious of the Lord sees that was precious in my sight. Thou hast been, thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east. And gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar. And my daughters from the ends of the earth. And even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, yes, I have made him, verse 21, this people have I formed for myself. The Lord is seeing the people he takes out of the burning bush and is taking them to the promised land. If they will follow him, if they will honor him, if they will obey him, if they will walk step by step with the Lord, he said, I formed them for myself, not for the world, for myself. Not for self, for himself. And it is not for Satan, for myself. And it is not only for this world of temporal existence, for myself, for all eternity. They shall show forth my praise. I pray that that will be your experience. I said that will be your experience. He tells us that he has refined us. Look at chapter 48 of Isaiah. Chapter 48 of Isaiah. We're looking at verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. It tells us of the choice he has made. It, tell, it tells us where he has taken us from. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it? For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. What a deliverance that is. It gives to some people. And it brings us out of that furnace of fire. It brings us out of that burning bush. Like it did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It will bring you out. We are looking at Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. We are looking at verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 19. It says, 
Therefore, thus says the Lord, if thou return, then I will bring thee again, if thou return. That means you make up your mind, you decide how long you are going to stay in the burning bush. Look around your life. The pressures and the pain. The fire and the fury of the world. Look at your life. The trauma, the trouble, the trials, the temptations, and the tribulation you are going through. Look at your life. And look at the burning bush. And look at the pain you are going through. If you like to remain there, God will never force deliverance on anyone. God will never force freedom on anyone. God will never force liberation on anyone. But he says, if you be willing and you want to come out, out of that burning bush, out of that torment, out of that trial, out of all the pressures and the pains you're going through. And there's no point just crying and saying, I'm suffering here, I'm neglected here, I'm forsaken here. You know what to do? Come out of your sin, come out of your evil, and come out of that self-centeredness. That's what the Lord will do. The Lord said in that verse of Scripture, as He tells us how He delivers His people, and He tells us the way He takes, and He tells us the things He does, and he tells us the method he applies. He says, if thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vile, that is to examine your life, and then you see what is vile, defiled, evil, dirty, polluted, sinful, then you take, get rid of them, and then you keep what is precious, the precious word of God, the precious grace of God, the precious fruit of the Spirit, the precious virtue of the Christian life, keep that which is precious, then it says, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. In verse 20, and I will make thee unto this people a fence brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee, and to deliver thee, says the Lord, and I will deliver thee, out of the hands of the wicked. I thought you respond to that. The children of Israel, they were in the hands of the wicked. The burning bush, the Egyptians. But then the Lord said, I'm going to deliver them. I'll bring them out. I'll set them free. And those Egyptians will not be able to lay their hands on them anymore. And the same promise the Lord is giving us now. It says, if you will do the right... If you will reject the evil, if you will get his sin, everything the Lord is saying, this is wrong. Everything contrary to his will, contrary to his word, contrary to his doctrine. If you reject everything and you come clean and you come out and you come free, free to the Lord. It says, I will deliver thee out of the end of the wicked and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible, the Lord will do it. In Ezekiel chapter 13, Ezekiel chapter 13, the deliverance from the burning bush by the powerful Lord. Ezekiel chapter 13. And there the Lord is telling us in verse 22, because with lies he have made the heart of the righteous sad. That's why some people are in the burning bush. That's why some people are still in the furnace of fire. With lies, they make the heart of the righteous sad. They give the wrong information to the righteous deliberately to make the righteous sad. They bring deception, hypocrisy, untruth. That which is not true. They bring it to the righteous. 
so that the righteous will believe their lie and be sad. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. The Lord said they were in their fairy furnace in the burning bush because they are walking contrary unto me. I want the righteous to be happy. They want the righteous to be sad. I want the righteous to rejoice and jubilate and celebrate. They want the righteous to be downcast. He said, that's why I'm forsaking them. And he says, and I've strengthened the hands of the wicked. That he should not return from his wicked way by promising him like, Therefore, ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations. For I will deliver my people out of your hand. The, the Lord will deliver you. Out of the hand of the people of those that want the righteous of a sad. He says, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. There's deliverance for us today. Total deliverance, complete deliverance. And as Larry, uh, deliverance that will lead us to even deliverance of yonder. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Who delivered us in the past from so great a death and does deliver in the present. And then it says now in the future and will yet in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. In the past, he delivered. In the present, he does deliver. And then in the future, he will yet deliver us. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Total deliverance is ours in Jesus' name. Total deliverance, complete deliverance, soul, spirit, and body. Deliverance from sin. Deliverance from satanic attack. Deliverance from suffering. Deliverance from the burning bush. Complete, complete deliverance. Deliverance today, deliverance forever. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 17, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me, the Lord will stand with you. And strengthen me, the Lord will strengthen you. And that by me the preaching might be fully known. And that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from how many evil works? From every evil work. Whether it is coming from a man or coming from a woman. Whether it is coming from a friend or coming from a foe. Whether it is coming from a neighbor or it is coming from a stranger. Whether it is coming from the powerful people of this world or it is coming from the people who are powerless. So are only bragging of the power they don't possess. The Lord will deliver you out of every evil world in Jesus name. And he will preserve me unto his everlasting heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. We come to point number three now. Point number three. Direction from the burning bush to the promised land. Direction from the burning bush to the promised land. Didn't I tell you for the children of Israel, they followed a, mile, a kind of milestone, the path that was lined. And I told you, for the children of Israel, there was Passover. For the children of Israel, there was a passage through the Red Sea. For the children of Israel, there was the provision of manna. And for the children of Israel, there was a pouring out of water, uh, pouring out water from the rock. For the children of Israel, the promulgation of the law, proclamation of the law. And then for the children of Israel, the principles of relationship. For the children of Israel, the preparation of the tabernacle. Now for us, the children of God today, and we know that he's leading us from this world to glory on high. He's leading us from the burning bush, and he's leading us into the kingdom of God. 
let me show you something to start with in Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. We're looking at verse 22. Chapter 14, verse 22. Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation that's the burning bush that's the burning bush we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of god that is the promised land much tribulation burning bush kingdom of god promised land we're moving on and the lord is showing us the pathway how to come out of that burning bush until we get to the promised land and my desire for you my labor over you is that you will get to that place too look at first peter chapter one first peter chapter one it says in verse six let me go back to verse five who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time that's the promised land that he wants to get us to the place that is heaven we are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time in fact he says we're going for an inheritance there verse 4 to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you that's your promised land right there but you know there's a burning bush the fairy trials the difficulties the dangers and there are persecutions verse seven of verse six wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perishes though it be tried with fire that's the burning bush the trial the persecution the suffering the things we go through in life the burning bush so we can get our inheritance eventually it says might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of jesus christ whom have you not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul what are the milestones that will lead us there do you remember the children of Israel? some of them did not go through all the milestones they, let, they went back they said, no, we cannot go through anymore. In fact, they said, choose us a captain. Want to return. We're tired. We're fed up. We're discouraged. And many of them, they died in the wilderness because they didn't go through all their milestones. But we are going to go through. I said, we're going to go through. What are the milestones for the church, for the believer, New Testament believer, New Covenant believer? The one that is following after the Lord. And he says, I'm getting out of that burning bush. And I'm going to journey on and journey on and journey on. Until I get to that glory above. To that promised land. Number one, salvation. Number one, salvation. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth his son. And I shall call his name Jesus, for he shall do what? He shall do what? Save his people, what's the next word? From their sins. He doesn't save us in sin. He saves us from our sins. That's salvation, that's salvation. That's the very first milestone. On the way out of the burning bush into the promised land and I pray that you will not miss that salvation 
We're looking at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading there in verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out what? Tell me out loud. Work out your own salvation of fear and trembling. Don't become careless. Don't become negligent. Remember why you came into the ministry? Remember how you came to the church? Remember why you were taking the church? Remember why you denied yourself? All these years is for salvation. And for you to be able to get to heaven, don't forget in the middle of the journey, work out your own salvation of fear and trembling. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. I'm reading there from verse 4. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sineth not. Those who are still keeping their salvation, they sin not. Those who are still looking up to the Lord, O oh Lord, keep me, O oh Lord, hold my hand, they sin not. Those who have the priority of their lives, they want to get out of the burning bush and get to the land of promise, they sin not. Those who are still abiding in the calling of the Lord, in the work of grace, it says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous, he that committeth sin is of the devil. Is a property of the devil. Is a servant of the devil. Is a child of the devil. And you know that it says, For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Does not commit a deliberate sin. Anybody that wants to live will not deliberately take poison. Anyone that wants to be active, active and powerful and mighty and happy and joyful and productive will not deliberately take poison. If you find anybody that is playing with poison, deliberately taking poison, playing with sin, joking with sin, committing sin. Uh, they said, the Bible says it should not be done. I'm going to do it. You know, somebody taking poison to just, you know, I'm going to make daddy unhappy by taking poison. I'm going to make mommy unhappy by taking poison. He wants to die. He wants to go to hell. Anybody that wants to live and wants to have his name in the book of life and remain there will not take poison just because of daddy, because of mommy, or because of anybody. It says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Verse 9. It says, for the seed of God remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. The first milestone on our way to the promised land, salvation. Number two, supplication. Supplication, supplication. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading verse 26, verse 41. Watch and pray. That's supplication. You pray. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Number three, separation. Separation. Salvation, yes. Supplication, yes. Separation. Separation. It says in 2 Corinthians 
chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, what? Tell me out loud. I can't hear you. Use your loudspeaker. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate. You know, there are some little, little children. Sometimes daddy may know that this young man is um, on his way to prison. Because daddy knows or mommy knows what that child that other child is doing. And he calls his own daughter. And he says, my daughter, you know what? I, I know you cannot live in this world without having a friend. There are some other good, good people around. But you know, watch yourself. I don't want you to move with so and so. Daddy was wrong in that. There should be no discrimination. My daughter, pay attention. I'm thinking about your future. Don't walk with him. Don't go with him. Don't interact with him. He's on his way to a place I can't tell you because I don't want you to tell him. And then the child may say, well, daddy, that's your own. Old man's idea. And then that daughter continues to move, continues to move with the boy. Eventually, they catch the boy. And the boy is on the way to prison. And then they catch the girl too because they say some of the exhibits that he stole is in your hand. And then you go to prison with them. The Lord knows how to hurt you. The Lord knows how to destroy you. And the Lord knows what to lead you to hell. And he says, come out from among them. And be separate, says the Lord. And then it says, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Number one, what's number one? Salvation, what's number two? Supplication, what's number three? Separation, number four, surrender. Surrender, submission. Surrender is submission. James chapter four. James chapter four. I'm reading there from verse seven. James chapter four. Verse 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Surrender. Your will, surrender. Your ways, surrender. Your own willfulness. Willfulness means stubbornness. Surrender it. Submit yourself therefore unto God. Only that will you be able to resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Number five, sanctification. Sanctification. That means the Lord reaches out to your heart. And then he takes away that inward impurity. Brothers and sisters, we look up for a moment. I come back to the school system again. You know, sometimes we go to school. And then, the, you know, if you have a great career, and your great career demands that you must pass English very well, what can you do? How far can you go in, you know, in profession, in career, without good English, spoken English and written English? You want to be a journalist, you want to be an engineer, you want to be a good politician, you want to be a good scientist, you want to be an agriculturist, you want what can you do in, in this life without good English and then mathematics and you know your father tells you and he says you know these subjects are compulsory make sure that you get involved with this and make sure you get distinction in your English and maths and then you go to school say hey, daddy is always talking about math in fact just because that is a facile sin, I'm going to play with it. I'm going to just push it aside. I'm going to tell daddy, I'm a man now. You know, the daddy is still looking at me as a little boy, a little girl. I'm a child of my own mind. I don't want daddy dictating to me because daddy emphasizes English and math 
I'm going to reject it. I'm going to, you know, take all these other subjects, uh, physical education and horticulture and, you know, whatever it is, and planting flowers and taking this and taking that. As for it, just because that is emphasizing it, I'm not going to do anything with it. Well, it's going to affect you in life. It's going to affect you in life. Anybody could have told you, daddy could have told you, or your own brothers could have told you, and the people that love you could have told you that those two subjects are important. What am I saying? You know, there are people that will kind of reject this compulsory experience, holiness and sanctification, because the pastor is emphasizing it. Because the GS is nailing it on the head, I want to show him. I don't agree with him. Well, it's going to be to your loss. Just because I'm the one emphasizing sanctification. That's the reason why. Is if another person preaches it, I will accept. If another person emphasizes it, I will accept. But just because the pastor emphasizing it, I'm going to show him. So that if I'm not holy, he'll be sad. If I'm not sanctified, it'll be sad. If everything is talk, every time he's talking about sanctification, I put up a kind of not caring attitude. I'll make him sad. Do you want to make somebody sad at the expense of your life? Going to hell. You're going to hell just because you take pleasure. Say, Pastor, Pastor, look at me. You say holiness. And I'm going to go to hell because I want to make you sad. I want to show you that even though you think I'm part of your congregation, I will go to hell so as to make you sad. I hope you don't take poison just to make somebody sad. I hope you don't head the, your way to the hospital or to the, to the prison just to make somebody sad. I hope you don't go to get HIV AIDS just because I'm preaching against HIV AIDS and you want to make your pastor sad Okay, because he said, don't marry HIV, a carrier. I'm going to do it just to make him sad. Rejecting sanctification to make somebody sad. Rejecting holiness to make somebody sad. You'll pay their price for that in all eternity. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 49. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 49. In Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 49, uh, chapter 12, verse 14, verse 14. Where did I get 49? Maybe it's my mathematics coming back now. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, which verse now? Tell me the right verse. Your mass is good. Your mass is good. Verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It's a compulsory subject, holiness. It's an indispensable experience, holiness. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm reading verse 3. It says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. Verse 7, for God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God was also giving us his Holy Spirit, the, the milestones on the way to the promised land, salvation, separation, supplication, surrender, submission, sanctification. Number six, spiritual baptism. Spiritual baptism, that is the baptism in the Holy Ghost in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Verse 4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. 
For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. In verse 8, for ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I pray that that power will come upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Number seven, soul winning, soul winning, soul winning. The Lord has established us and the Lord has put us in place so that we we'll win souls. We're looking at John chapter 15. John chapter 15 verse 1. I am the true vine. My father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth. What kind of fruit? Much, much, much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples fruit of soul winning he wants us to have soul winning number eight stewardship and service stewardship and service stewardship and service first corinthians chapter four first corinthians chapter four verse two moreover it is required in stewards it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful Serving the Lord faithfully. Serving the Lord because you know the Lord is watching you. And because the Lord is looking at your life. And the Lord is saying, I'm taking you out. Out of the burning bush. And I'm taking you to the promised land. Follow these steps and you will get there. I said you will get there. Salvation, get saved. Supplication, watch and pray. Separation, come out from among them. Surrender, submission. Submit yourself unto God. And sanctification. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Spirit baptism. Receive power with the Holy Ghost coming upon you. Soul winning. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Stewardship, service. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Reading from verse 25, see that she refuse not him that speaketh. Speaking about salvation, don't refuse. About supplication, don't refuse. About separation, don't refuse. About sanctification, don't refuse. About absolute surrender, see that she refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not, who refused him? that speak on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, once yet, once more, I will shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaking as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receive in the kingdom, that's the promised land, the promised land, the promised land, wherefore we receive in the kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence, and godly fear, for our God is a consuming 
fire. He wants to lead us to the promised land. Will you be there? I said, will you be there? Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. I want to be there. You want to be there. We want to be there. On to the promised land. On to the promised land. Talk to the Lord in prayer today. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Is the salvation still there? Or have you thrown it away? Are you walking step by step through those milestones that lead us to that promised land out of the burning bush? Out of the burning bush. This is a time for us to have the grace of God in our lives. This is a time for us to call upon the name of the Lord so that He'll bring us out. Are you praying or just thinking? Tell the Lord, Jesus came to take us out, out of our sins, out of our evil. That shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. You don't commit sin, practicing sin like a game. Whosoever is born of God will not remain in sin. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, does not know him. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Will you take poison to make somebody happy? Will you do evil to make somebody happy? Just take poison and kill yourself so that somebody who wants to be happy by your drinking poison, you just want to make him happy at the expense of your life. Will you sin to make somebody happy? That's a wicked man who wants to see you die, lose your life, backslide, miss heaven, and is happy that you know how to tell a lie. Happy. You know how to dis dishonor the Lord. Happy that you know how to blaspheme the name of the Lord. How wise are you to sin on other people's behalf? You know that Jesus Christ was manifested that he might take us away from our sin, salvation. That's a milestone, salvation. Separation. Come out from among them. Separate from that fornicator. Separate from that adulterer. Separate from that occultic man. Run for your life. Separate. The adulterers and adulteresses. Don't you know that friendship or the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Separate. For the sake of your soul. For the sake of eternity. For the sake of getting to heaven. Come ye out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Then I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Don't please anybody at the expense of your soul. 
don't throw away your salvation just to please somebody. Your watchfulness, your consecration, your conviction. Your commitment to the Lord. Don't throw away that just to please somebody. Isn't your life precious to you? Salvation, separation, supplication. Watch and pray that ye fall not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. Self-denial. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. If anyone comes after me and does not deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, he cannot be my disciple. Self-denial. Deny yourself for the pleasure of sin. Deny yourself of the careless attitude of the world. Deny yourself of any act or action that will make the Lord to depart from you. Self-denial. Sanctification. Holiness of heart, holiness of spirit, holiness of thought, holiness in action, holiness in behavior, holiness through and through, holiness within, holiness without. Holiness when you are alone. Holiness when you are with other people. Holiness when you are with men. Holiness when you are with women. Holiness every time. Holiness in the place of work. Holiness in your family. Holiness everywhere. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Salvation. Make sure it's intact. Supplication. Keep on praying. Watch and pray. Separation. Come out among them. Self-denial. 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 Your body may be crying out for alcohol. Self-denial. Your body is crying out for secret. Self-denial. Deny yourself. Your body is crying out for something illegitimate, something illegal, something poisonous, something immoral, something unrighteous. Deny yourself. Self-denial. Sanctification. That's what it takes. That is the will of God. Spirit baptism. John truly baptized with water. But he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Wait in Jerusalem. Wait where you are. For I send the promise of my Father upon you. He shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So winning, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Go into all the world and preach the word, the gospel, the good news to every creature. So we need. All power on earth and in heaven is given unto me. Go ye therefore 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. So winning, go ahead and do it. Say ye not, you are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, the harvest is ripe already. And I send you out to reap where others have labored. So winning. And if a branch will not bear fruit, my father will cut it off. It will be withered. And men gather them into the fire and they are burnt. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Stewardship. Stewardship and service. Whereby see that we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have, let us possess, let us receive grace whereby we can serve God with reverence and godly fear, stewardship and service. No I service, serving the Lord with sincerity, with firmness of purpose, cleaving to the Lord all the days of your life. Giving yourself unreservedly, wholeheartedly, totally unto the Lord so that He'll take you from the burning bush to the promised land. Don't look back. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Get ready. Be prepared. You know what's compulsory, essential, indispensable, a non-negotiable that you cannot toy with, you cannot play with, you cannot allow a friend, a foe, an enemy, an acquaintance to touch this salvation, supplication, separation, self-denial sanctification, spirit baptism, soul winning, stewardship and service, abide in it, and when the Lord comes, he'll take you home to the promised land, and great will be your reward.